during the old school 80s this month. Yes. <laughs> and we're alive. Okay. Hello and welcome to the Social Recruiting Show. I'm Katrina Collier. I'm a social recruiting trainer and speaker. I'm of course joined by my gorgeous co-host Audra Knight, who is an employer branding genius. Has children screaming in the background, or Erin does, anyway. <laughs> She's a bass player. She's a guru. She loves a blab cat. <laughs> the cat, awesome. Anyway, we are super excited because, one, we have got Aaron Daniels, sourcing God, on the show today. Oh, it's Lord. Very, very special. <laughs> Nothing, no pressure to what he has to live up to. And, of course, we have hijacked AirSource for an hour, which is super exciting as well. So welcome, mm -hmm. Aaron. Ah, thanks for having me, Air Source. Thank you. Nice. Appreciate yeah, thank it. You. Thank you. So, Aaron, we both uh, know you and then follow you on Snap, obviously, because you have some good stuff on there. But for anyone that doesn't, can you kind of walk them through your career and what you're doing now at your company? Yeah, sure. So, um, I, everything good in my life happened by accident. I, I love to tell people that. So, um, I used to be in the in the military for uh, for the army and. Um, when uh, I had come back from a deployment, they were like, hey, you know what? You should be a recruiter. I said, Shh, no way. I'm never going to do that. Fast forward. Um, so I ended up doing it. And then um, I got out uh, from active duty, went to the reserves. And then I had to find uh, what I love to call the real job in the civilian world. Um, and so I applied to this thing called the government slash military sourcer. And I thought sourcing, supply and logistics, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> but with my background in recruiting for the military, I was just supporting uh, signal intelligence, military intelligence. So I had a security clearance and I knew government lingo and contracts and all that stuff. Um, and that's what they were looking for, somebody who knew that type of language. Um, and basically, uh, the wonderful, awesome friend of mine, Elena Rivas, um, hired me. Um, even though I had no idea what sourcing was, she knew that I had the government side. So she took me under her wing and um, for a week gave me sourcing immersion. And then she said, after this, you're on your own and you better make it happen. And so it just, I took off from there. I was like a duck to water. I loved it. So I think a couple months later, I was training the team on how to do uh, Google custom search engines back before the limited results and all that jazz. And I just, I don't know what happened. It was, it was a beautiful, happy accident. Um, so that was my agency life. So I did an agency for uh, almost four years, <clears throat> went to an oil and gas agency, uh, and then the, there's a, the recent bust that we're recovering from here in Houston. That happened as soon as I got there, so I was there very short-lived for seven months. Um, and then I went to Northrop Grumman, a defense contractor, um, recruiting technical engineers, airframe stuff, all kinds of crazy cleared folks. Um, and then now I work for the largest private employer in Texas. Uh, they're called HEB. If you've never been to Texas and you've never shopped at a grocery store uh, or one of our retailer locations, then you won't know it. But um, the owner uh, is, he takes care of his employees really well. And they wanted to have a sourcing function here um, mm -hmm. because they're getting to that point. You know, a lot of companies get big enough and they're like, hey, we got to start recruiting outside of the state. So how do we do that? And so they started, wanted to stand up a sourcing function and, that's where I fit into it. So I'm, uh, I was, I am their first sorcerer, and um, it's going splendid, splendid thus far. So I dig right. it. So Is that, you sure? Weren't you talking about some tech issues? No. Okay. Speaking <laughs> <laughs> so, of tech issues, no, Audra, I have not been able to get the Facebook Live to work, and I've tried uh, again while you've been shutting. Oh well. We'll share the recording. I'm sure I'm doing it right, but we've got the recording, and we can upload it later, and it's all good. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> Right on. So I, I, I don't know if I, you guys had Randy Bailey on not too long ago, and that dude is amazing. And I've seen some of the other sorcerers that you've had on before, and it's everyone, for the most part, has like a niche, right? And I'm, yeah. I don't have a niche. I, you I'm, not. I'm, you just get around. I guess. What about the government stuff? That's a niche, yeah. isn't it? Well, that's what I thought too. I haven't worked on the government role since I left uh, Northrop Grumman, but I'm even at Northrop Grumman, I was working, I had a couple of HR roles on my bench. I had technical roles. I'm a true, spe uh, a true non-specialist. I'm a true generalist. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't mean to be. Uh, it just happens. So people are like, does it just give to Aaron? Okay. Hey, David <laughs> Nicola wants to know if you're building a sourcing team. Maybe David's after a new job. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> David, I'm going to talk out of both sides of my mouth. Yes and no. Holler <laughs> me later, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
That would be trouble. I love oh that my too. gosh, me and David? <laughs> yeah. People oh my would God, be going God. nuts. I miss that boy. I haven't seen him in like five minutes. So mm -hmm. I see what I, it makes me laugh. I see some of you guys more than I see my mates in, here in the UK. I've got shy with sources in the US. It's awesome. So. <laughs> but does it really matter if you're a generalist? Surely sourcing skills are sourcing skills, and that's where the Boolean comes in. I mean, to a point, I, I think um, if you have the basics down uh, for sourcing, if you that true fundamentals, the blocking and tackling and sourcing, the research, the pre-search and all that jazz, um, your process can be the same and you'll still be successful. But uh, like Steve uh, Levy, who we were talking about earlier, he really shines in the tech space. In the tech, so yeah. he's going to have to, he's a, he'll have a faster spin up, but um, uh, any sourcer can tackle any role, yeah. in my personal opinion. I think the difference when it comes to that tech also is a lot of that, and which I talk about so many times, the candidate engagement, outreach, you know, it, well, yeah. any of the in short supply. Like I'm sure some of your buyers are really hard to get their attention for, people like that, but it's a certain skill sets where there's yeah. in short supply. Yeah, well, I mean, we hire all kinds of crazy stuff. I had no idea. We're like, we're a grocery store, but we hire all kinds of stuff. I'm working, I'm looking for data scientists right now. Wow. So, oh, wow. That's so cool. Yeah. So, any data scientists on the call? Yeah. Uh -huh. Hi. San Antonio is gorgeous. <laughs> we, got, we need those too, but in Dublin. I love San Antonio. I'm not sure I could live there, but I quite yeah. love it. Oh my yeah. gosh. Our corporate offices are right off the river, uh, the river walk, not the yeah. touristy side, but like the business side. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Gorgeous. I love well, it. I was, I, I was walking along in, of all places, Hemel Hempstead, which will mean nothing to you, yesterday. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. reminded me of that river walk because there's no railing. And I'm like, all those restaurants, all that wine, all that water. <laughs> there must hey, be man. That, there must be people that fall in and never come out again. <laughs> yeah, well, people do fall in. People fall in. Uh, mostly they? runners, though. Mostly runners because there's a nice trail. Um, yeah. But when it's wet, you can slip and tumble so. or they're using their phone like texting <laughs> yeah texting and walking well at that point like come on you're walking that's like the, i don't know what i think a little bit of darwinism is at play there and San, like true san antonians are like that's your problem right yeah. don't yeah. fall in the river it's a river right so <laughs> it smells no i shouldn't say that but, but honestly if you're a data scientist aaron daniels is your person because there's the river wall <laughs> gorgeous do you hire a lot of people remote or is it more Headquarters. It's more. It's more headquarters. Yeah. Um, well, like data scientists could be remote, couldn't they? They could, um, but apparently they're in. So in the retail space, um, mm -hmm. it's very. They keep things close to their chest because you can come out with something brand spanking new that no one else has done before in six months. Our competitors will copy it and do it too. So like they like to keep people in their office. Um, I work remotely for them uh, because I support both Houston and San Antonio, and I live in Houston. So, um, I just travel back and forth. So, yeah, when needed. I th yeah, it's, it seems more and more these days you can, but I always think the recruiting function can be because you need to have a lot of private conversations, right? Oh, that's agreed. a good point. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, <laughs> especially when you talk about comp and all that stuff. So, I mean, companies, even the companies that we think, you know, we think companies that kind of have it together. Some of them, there's still conversation you have to have compensation and benefits. There's always pay inequities. There's all kinds of stuff you have to worry about. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But do you make contact as well? Do I make contact as well? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know some sources don't. They just. I, I think they're part of the training. Yeah. Now, right? Yeah. I think who I think sourcing 1.0. I think Glenn Kathy kind of dubbed it that way, like sourcing 1.0 data. No, Amy Beth Hill or Quinn. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Amy Beth. Um, <laughs> she's sourcing 1.0 was this data gen only. Sourcing 2.0 yeah. was reach yeah. out, engage tie a shiny red bow, give them a cup of coffee, smack on the back, and here you go, recruiter, and then go nuts, right? So that's, yeah. Lord willing, that's my job. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I've got a question for you, right? So yeah. I, I personally don't think bullying is that complicated. I guess that's because I teach it. But it, every time I go to talk about it, people go, <gasps> <laughs> so, and I'm like, really? It's like, and or not, whatever. Um, but. Spill the beans. Why do you think people make it so complicated? Because it looks it looks mean. <laughs> it looks like math. It looks mean. Yeah, it looks like math. And listen, I'm half Can Asian. I just say and I'm called mathematics or maths with an S. No, no, <laughs> all the maths. You got to do all the maths. But <laughs> math. um, I'm half Asian and I suck at math. Right. So <laughs> math. I, I'm okay. I like 
I, math and me, we're just not going to talk about that. But with sort bullying me, it, it's great. It's only three words mm-hmm. and two different syntax, right? It's the yeah. that's both the science and the art of of the search because the science is the syntax. The art is how you put it together. Like we could all. Yeah put our strings together for the same search and have something wildly different. And we're all going to have different results. And that mm-hmm. part to me is why I love sourcing. Cause I'm like, well, yeah. why is it different? Why did this show up? Then this didn't. So, and that's why people don't like it. Um, and then of course there's tools nowadays that will generate Boolean for you. Right. Um, yeah. Like hire tool, the yeah. hottest freaking tool in the recruiting scene right now has mm-hmm. a great Boolean generator. Right, um, folks across the pond, social talent to have a great Boolean generator. However, announce my well, on my side. Oh, no. <laughs> Katrina can Sorry, teach you how to I'm fix joking, their. I'm <laughs> Katrina can teach you how to fix the Boolean string when it breaks from social that's talent. Really. How about there? There you go. Um, but that well, that's my point. But that's my point exactly. They're all going to copy and paste the same one, right? They're not. They've lost the art of how to exactly. Exactly yeah. my point. And, you know, if you don't know, at least I'm not saying you have to be able to generate a Boolean string that's like a freaking paragraph long because you don't, especially with the way Google works and a lot of search engines work, all that semantic search behind there, clustering those those titles together and those keywords. You don't need to do that anymore. Um, but you damn know, you damn need, need to know how to diagnose that. Right. So if yeah. you run a string from higher tool or any other Boolean builder on the market, yeah. it's, it's only going to give you a finite piece. Of, uh, of results and if it's not giving you at least 30 to 40 or whatever you want in your normal workflow you need to yeah. diagnose it and if you don't know boolean you're, you're kind of dead in the water so uh, we're still going to forever need to know how to do the search and how to diagnose those tools when they're wrong because they will be wrong what happens if they break i mean um i think higher tool has uh, a double nesting so that's a parentheses inside of parentheses a lot of places um uh, won't really work well with that, right? Yeah. So next time any of you guys out there using hire tool, check out the double nesting. In other words, the parentheses inside the parentheses. Play with that string. Don't mess with the yeah. keywords. Play with the string and see if it tailors your results. Yeah, it gets different results. Hmm. Dollars to donuts, it will. So you also mentioned semantic search. Much as I know what that is, I'm going to let you explain. Yeah, sure. So um, if you have like a, a Siri on your on your on your iPhone or you have the Google Assistant on your Android um, or even Amazon Alexa can do a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so you say you're looking for a recruiter and it's going to stem it like back in the day. We used to use the asterisks to stem and Boolean. So I would say recruiting, recruiter, recruited, recruits, um, all that jazz. So. Um, but not only will semantic search stem that, but also find the synonyms of that as well. Um, so recruiter, staffing, yeah. headhunter, things like that. So, so it does it for you? That's cool. Yeah. So, I mean, you could do that in Google today. That's why, I mean, that's why Boolean strings yeah. don't need to be so long. Um, I think, I'll, like, sometimes it's, it's like a client. The other words. Well, the, if you know how to write Boolean, right, like make a huge long Boolean string for those uh, people who are quite impatient for you and be like, look, I'm running this. And they're like, oh, OK, you know, mm-hmm. kind of like telling the flex capacitor is not working. <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> Do you think, though, it will ever Do you have any young people on this call who know, need to know what a flex, flex capacitor is? Wait, Do you have um, to be young to know? Oh, sh- that movie's like 20 plus years old. Yeah, it's right? crazy. You, you just so I just give me, give me Katrina, give me a minute. I'm having a moment. I'm just having a, a an epiphany yeah. right now. That... It's older than that. Well, the biggest question was, come on, it's, it's, it's thirty years. Is it? No, yeah. surely I, not. I was, yeah, I'm older than both of you, and I was in senior school, and I'm coming up to my thirty year reunion. So yeah, it seriously it was out like to the 86, Google eighty six. Wow. But wait, more um, importantly, do you guys like number one or number two better? Oh, number one. No, uh, yeah. I think two was pretty awesome. Two was two was pretty awesome because the hoverboard, right? Who doesn't want a hoverboard? Mm-hmm. Uh, recruiting animal. I didn't understand exactly what Aaron meant about playing manually with the strings generated by Hire Tool. Hey, what's up, animal? Um, <laughs> so uh, when when Hire Tool generates a string for you. Um, you can, uh, when you copy it or you can run it with their little buttons at the bottom, um, play with it. So there's, there's double parentheses brackets in there and there's, um, 
uh, they're, they're using the and operator. So um, you can play with just the syntax only um, yeah. to see if it makes a difference. Because sometimes it looks like it's sometimes it'd be superfluous. So Hey, hey, Kristen, do you use it on Facebook? Because somebody was saying yesterday they were having issues. Facebook gave them a warning. Do you use source direct on Facebook or do you use tools? Both. No, I meant hire tool on Facebook specifically. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. I, I use hire tool. Um, but I mean, um, does it X-ray Facebook or does it do like what um, Shane has created with his tool? It does exactly what, it, what Shane does yeah. in his tool. Oh, right. um, I wonder his tool is nice. I like his tool. Warning. Yeah, it's tool's great. He's got a smack on the wrist. She was using hire tool to find candidates on Facebook and got a warning. Yeah. But if I can see it, I can block. This is somebody in recruiters who actually make placements group. I'm not going to name names because that would be rude. Oh, okay, cool. She did get a bit excited. You got a warning. Um, I've never done that. But I mean, I sat running searches on Shane's tons of times. Like I'm training, so we're doing search, 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 and it's yeah. never. So maybe, I don't know. Like I'm just like spitballing here, but maybe somebody who. Um... Spitballing. Can I have it? <laughs> spitballing. Just taking a guess here, but. Um... <laughs> Maybe it's uh, somebody who sends too many messages to someone they're not connected to directly. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, just, just, yeah. Again, just sitting all in or taking a guess. No, it was only searching. Weird. Oh, huh, yeah. I've never come across that. Hey, is, that is that against their policy? I never read those things. I yeah, should. Well, yeah. I do I do when they make changes. Um, well, tell that person to take a screenshot and post it because we need to be aware of that. And thanks for the share. Appreciate you know, it. Yeah. It's in the recruiters who make placement groups. I just didn't want to. Call that's because like, it's yeah. a quite small group, which is quite nice. So, when HireTool spits out a string from the keywords you've insert, you can tamper with it before running it. Thank you, Jamie. That's some magic stuff. Right? I do both. Use tools to source Facebook and also ha hack the URL. Yeah. Right. Cool. I, I use tool on Facebook. I think it's so underused. I mean, I've got clients sending video messages and all sorts. I think they're the best. I tell you, man. Like Facebook is is the the unsung hero right now i was tra tra i was training yesterday and um somebody was like well you know i can't find anybody i'm like well, where are you going well i go to indeed and i go to linkedin and i'm just like i don't know what to do okay well have you tried facebook like double the monthly active users i think triple the monthly active users than linkedin um what they say? oh i don't know yeah. i don't do that for no <laughs> That's like no, so personal. So it's personal. The monthly, the monthly users on LinkedIn is 106 million, and it's 1 billion will go into Facebook today. Oh, and one weird. point, I think it's something like 1.6 billion will go in in the month. Awesome. They've got like nearly that's 2 amazing. billion. Yeah. And it was really yeah. funny because LinkedIn were at this event yesterday, and I'm, of course, doing my usual keynote slagging off LinkedIn as I do. Um, more to just don't rely on it, get off it, blah, blah, blah. And then LinkedIn got up, and they're like, well, I'm sure that Microsoft wouldn't have bought us if we were dying. <laughs> like, okay, I'll just shut up now. But actually, it was really sweet. And he goes, I, if I went into a room and people didn't hate us, I'd think there was something wrong, which was quite a refreshing <laughs> attitude. But I'm just Aaron, like, it, it's recruiters and LinkedIn who've killed it, to be fair. Aaron, do you use Twitter much for sourcing? Uh, Thank you, like Audra. Like Commission a, tips in the post. <laughs> like a tertiary. Like a secondary tertiary effect. I don't ever, it's not my number one go to. Like every other, um, oh, Animal has a really good question. Um, like every <laughs> other uh, recruiter sourcer, you go to, your, to your, your biggest database and your most lowest hanging fruit first, right? Yeah. Um, just because everybody else is there doesn't mean everybody else is good at searching the mm -hmm. system. Like I'm no, I'm no like guru, expert, whatever, but I think I'm pretty good at what I do. <laughs> You're not? Oh, Audra, what guest did I bring on? <laughs> <laughs> um, my humility precedes itself. Uh, but, you know, if you can out-search or outperform or get a couple more keywords in the same database of whether it be LinkedIn or what have you, you, you just have to use all your results. Like, most recruiters will stop after the first and second page of results. Like, if you're going to make a search, like, commit, man, commit. Put a ring on it. Go through all the results. Just do it. <laughs> I right? like that. Yeah. So, Are you going to do the whole? Yeah. I, like I can't. That. I can't dance. I can't. <laughs> like I look like I'm having like somebody will call nine one one if I try to dance. So like this guy's having a heart attack. Um, I always love it when I just do that thing where you show your clients like current job title and change it to engineer rather than engineer or manger rather than mm. manager. I just watch their little faces go. 
oh my god that's like yeah, 20. That's amazing. <laughs> they're like 20 people not being contacted either yeah exactly oh, but, but then they can't type oh, i'm going really <laughs> you're gonna yeah. overlook a great engineer because they can't type <laughs> Listen. Well, sometimes that's on purpose because they don't want to be. Yeah. They don't want to be found, yeah. But no. Actually, I had that yesterday. So there was I used an, the example actually that I used at SourceCon with the guy who said, "Don't contact me if you work at Eurostaff or Eurostaff like company or you're an IT recruiter in the UK or Ireland." Mm -hmm. And sure enough, there's the head of marketing for Eurostaff sitting right <laughs> there in the audience. <laughs> but he was so cool. Glenn actually went and worked out who the recruiter was that had pissed this guy off and is sorting it out. That's oh, nice. really cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. So, can I? I I'm, I know I'm not running their show or nothing, but can I? Can we touch on Animal's question about yeah. uh, new recruiter? So, his question is: If a new recruiter knows nothing about bullying and wants to learn about bullying, what should, what should yeah. they do? Um, the Googles, number one, but number two, um, there's. I mean, Dean. DaCosta has great tutorials. Mark Ricci has good tutorials. You can read the SourceCon, uh, the SourceCon, um, what do you call that thing? We read where articles, blog, blog. Uh, and there's blog. all kinds of videos. Uh, and and then, then, the number one place you should do, you should <laughs> talk to this lovely lady, Skip no, Audra, you, over here. Are, are you like on commission for them or something? No, but honestly, <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, I, I bought, I would say my strength actually is really teaching the candidate engagement, to be fair, because yeah. I, I actually think there is so much information out there about Boolean strengths and tools that yeah. very few people are talking about. Okay, well, that's all wonderful. But well, I mean, you know, so, how do you get, how do I get Aaron to respond to my message? And that's actually what's becoming about. So, and I've ranted about that on every show for the last 20, so I won't go off on one. But honestly, the, the Google how to write Boolean is almost, you'll get so many good responses right in there. Yeah. Well, I'll say this because I do, uh, like, people will still hire me to come and train their teams here um, in Houston. And I'm like, listen, I mean, I'll take your money, but can we do this first? I tell yeah. them that. And so they'll get the basics, which is great because it's a waste yeah. of their money. If they, yeah. I mean, I know I'm like, I, I don't do it for the money. I do it to keep myself sharp and keep myself out there, yada, yada. But, I mean if you can get the foundations first and then bring in somebody else, if you want to give them a, inject, uh, a, a booster shot or whatever have you, or an extra cup of Joe to get them moving in the right direction, that's fine. Um, I but the I basics, some oh, uh, coffee, like really strong coffee. Okay. This is great. I love <laughs> that we have, I, would I Google Translate. I'm in Texas and I'm like, I don't know these words. I, I, I haven't even used one Texas thing yet. Not even one. I haven't That's even said so y'all once. Oh, I did now, y'all. I've been in Texas for 20 plus years. So, I mean. So, but if you were doing a Boolean string about coffee, you probably wouldn't write in Joe. So, I, I would not know to do that. Well, it depends where you're trying to find them. If you're trying to find them in Texas, you would. But not no, that's not, a te any. that's not a Texas thing. It's a cup oh, of Joe. Right? It's kind of. Yeah, All cup of joke. Yeah. You know, um, I think it's an older term, though. I don't know. Yeah. I always say a cup of joe, a cup of well, jab. Just in your target audience, right? <laughs> Recruiting <laughs> animal, right? A cup of joe is maybe too archaic for them. Yeah, I think it was bigger in the like the 40s and 50s. Yeah. Whatever. So I just like it because apparently I also am archaic because I use that. But yeah. Um, <laughs> I think sometimes you have a family word as well. So that could be something your parents have used and you've Hold on to it. I, um, I have stuff like that in my family, and I say it, and people look at me, and I'm like, oh, it's a Richardson one. <laughs> my parents were psychopaths. They never drank coffee. I don't know how they made life happen without coffee. Oh. I, don't know. I saw <laughs> Audra's face is priceless. <laughs> priceless. <laughs> totally involuntary. That was great. <laughs> I've had about five hours sleep, so believe me, I've had plenty of coffee. <laughs> I'm actually drinking tea, though. I'm being quite good. Oh, I don't like tea. No, so. no, uh, um, actually, no, this is orange or something. Not not TT. Wow. Have you told your British, you oh, told David, your, bro. Have Ugh. you told your British husband that you don't drink tea? Uh, he doesn't either. <gasps> He's a kind of Brit, isn't he? Wow. Yeah. He's a wild man. <laughs> <laughs> it's all well, about the beer. <laughs> when we were talking about consultants a second ago, I mean, a lot of times we, there's uh, folks who like overcharge, there's folks who kind of give you like a a template and all that stuff so yeah. I kind of I don't know why I'm being felt as if I pulled to double back to this question but I feel like I should so if your consultant won't do a tailored out of the box thing for you then that's not the right consultant to work with so yeah. consultants and trainers have their places um, yeah. but in the world of sourcing if you 
if you don't figure things out on your own or you don't at least have the itch to do so to figure things out um it's it, it's going to be a rough rough road It'll, it, it's definitely going to be an uphill battle you have yeah. to have the the figure it out mentality because uh, that's the only thing that's going to keep you alive especially um when uh, i think steve tweeted us the other day he said ask him about cues and and george bush or something like that i'm not sure what he was talking about yeah what's uh, that? So that's my, I love talking about this example because it's hilarious, number one. And then two, Steve and, and I, um, we, we racked our brains about this wreck. So when my agency days, um, I shit you not, this was a church pew salesman. Church pew salesman, 100% commission, had to fly themselves to their own meeting. Yeah, it was rough. Is rough. Wait, you um, were that or you were hiring that? I'm sorry, I missed that. I was recruiting for that. Wow. Yeah, it was it was it's tough. Actually, someone who sells church pews. I mean, I know that's how you enough churches. It probably makes sense, but it's what's like, the job title? <laughs> it, it couldn't be the entire church furnishings. There are all sorts of things in there. It's just the pews. <laughs> no, they, those were add-on products, but they got the majority of their money. Add-on the products. Oh, David, I'm repeating myself. He says he loves this story. Okay. <laughs> but the, uh, the they were in the East Coast, right? Not very, you don't have trucks and vans like you do here in Texas. Um, and they had to carry around three foot pew samples. Okay. There's, there's a thing. There's a thing called a pew sample plus in the East, you know, where it's like amazing. Boston churches have been around for like what, 60 plus years, 100 years. They've been around for a while. So it's it's really it's it was it was crazy. So the reason I bring that story up, um, because if you're in the sourcing world and you have the figure it out mentality, find yourself a mentor, at least a couple folks you can bounce a wreck off of. Because I had no idea what to do with this one. Um, mm -hmm. I built a my research profile. I was looking for um, furniture sales, uh, and at the end of the day, I called Steve, and he was like, "This is the weirdest wreck. I, one of the weirdest wrecks I've ever seen." So we talked about it. We we slept on it, and the next day. We started, uh, we called again, and, and so essentially we're just, we said, we'll just find regular furniture sales folks who are really successful and want to add something to their portfolio. They're going to afford, they can afford to find them, fly themselves to Waco, Texas, which by the way, Waco, Texas, you don't just fly to Waco. You got to fly to Dallas and then get like a little commuter plane or you drive, mm -hmm. which is a 45 minute to an hour drive. Oh, it's more than that, like hour, hour 20. Mm -hmm. So it's not exactly an easy commute and it's, you, you, you eat what you kill. Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So Sorry, we got them. Exactly. We got them fifteen right. qualified exactly. and interested <laughs> candidates. So. And you found you found the person. Well, they didn't hire anybody, but we sent them fifteen oh. people who were ready to rock. <laughs> Wait, they uh -huh. didn't hire anyone in the end. What what happened? They well, I, long story. They they like um, I think they were trying to scare people out of the job. To be honest. Oh. Wow. Well, I get their mindset right. This is not an easy job. Let's let's put them through the ringer. It's like. You sure you want to do that? Like, maybe try. I think and, the, and I also think that the um, so just in defense of the trainer, I always have. I get such a kick when I'm putting together training because I where I find people in really really unexpected places. Mm -hmm. But what I won't do is I'm not going to go in and teach you LinkedIn if you're hiring something that's just not going to be found there. And I think yeah. that's what I think that's what you're talking about. You've got to get curious and you've got to try other places and. Like I'm forever going on about Instagram, I freaking love it. Just think, you just got to be curious how you use it. But you can certainly find people on there and they're not going to expect your message. So yeah, you're going to see like, it. Dig in and try somewhere new. And, and but I think you're right. There's, yeah. Um, can you still share I, Spotify playlists? Can you do that? Yeah. Uh, I'm not the world's best Spotify person. I saw, I saw uh, an article a couple years ago where somebody put like the songs and the messages, the titles of the yeah. songs were like his recruiting message. That was yeah. brilliant, right? Oh, wow. That's really cool. Recruiting animal. I don't care if Aaron doesn't agree with me about recruiting people on Instagram. Do you use <laughs> I know you use Snapchat. Yeah. Seven hundred million yeah. Listen, freaking awesome. You I don't care where you find it. somebody. Like if you find somebody at the seven eleven on the corner, psh, bravo. Go do your job. Mm -hmm. Just go do your but job. There's so many ways to source on it. So one you can search for the links on Twitter where mm -hmm. people are just chucking the photos out on Twitter and they're going out as links. But you can you can source straight in there. Hashtags all sorts. Like like people staff who checked in. Oh, I love it. Sorry. I mean, especially it's like if you know that. Million users. It, it grew a hundred million in about the last two months. It's oh crazy. wow. Yeah, 
That's 200 million more than LinkedIn has. Okay, you've got to be creative, but you know. Sorry, so, I really like it. <laughs> I'm doing a search right now, just off the top of my head. Yeah. If you know the, if you know the hashtag, right? So, like, Damn. DevOps. <laughs> so Dude, lemon squeezy. Right? Please, it should be. Please look at David's comment. Oh my God. Hold on, I gotta go back to it. Order, order. Read well, that. I kind of disagree. What if you're trying to hire hackers? That might be a great place to find them. <laughs> well, we don't. I don't think we want those. We want the CEH hackers, the certified ethical hackers. Maybe not those kind of hackers. <laughs> well, maybe no, maybe those are the most genius because they went to jail because they did such a good job. <laughs> I don't know, man. Those are the ass clowns that steal my money. So I don't know about that. Yeah. Okay, hang on. For those watching the replay, though, who aren't yeah. seeing the comments, David Nicola, not Nicola, apparently. Um, <laughs> <laughs> asked is there ever a bad, bad place to source people maybe jail we've decided that could be good recruiting animal well jerry says he could source people at church but it probably isn't the best place it's all about the approach it depends what you're hiring why not in church yeah i would yeah. depending Network. on the church it's networking you don't actually walk up and shove a job in their face and go you yeah. want a job but you get showing to the <laughs> up. animal asked jerry is like you going praise jesus would you like a job Praise Jesus! <laughs> would you like Come on, dude. <laughs> I, mean, I would. I would. I mean, shoot. If you have a church that's in, like, if you're looking for oil and gas folks <laughs> in Texas, and there's a church in the woodlands that's really popular. Hey, Mr. Rose, I've known you on the call. Hello. Hello. I yeah, love this. Point, that would have been a good place to find the pew salesman. <laughs> yeah. So John's written, "Would you, would Jerry?" No. Oh, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Listen. <sighs> I'm gonna change my career to a pew salesman. I like that. <laughs> well, I mean, supposedly they can make a ton of money, but then, you know, it's probably a feast or famine, right? Because when you build a church, you put in pews. Yeah. It's a lot of money. And you get strong from all that lifting of the big, heavy pews. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's not like they're going to wear out as fast as you love the sofa, right? Then right. it's not going to get to the turnover. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's well, awesome. I mean, how old are pews? Like 100 years? Wow. Anyway. <laughs> How did we end up here from Bullion? <laughs> like, well, well, that depends. Are you using mahogany or cedar? I don't I know. I don't know. Uh, know. <laughs> Erin, I know you use, use Snapchat for personal, but is that also kind of for recruitment networking purposes or more just personal? I mean, for recruiting and networking for other recruiters, I, and I'm terrible because I haven't snapped in over a month, right? Oh, yeah. I, I go in patterns. It, I, yeah, I, I fall... Too in and then out of love with snapchat ever so <laughs> often but i i um i snap about recruiting and sourcing stuff um yeah. because i it's just another way to share knowledge right so yeah, the, yeah. someone told me a long time ago the best of the best share their knowledge because you know not everybody's going to pick up on it or use it or have the gumption to do so and i think like hell i didn't get to where i'm at today on my own exactly right you know mm -hmm. takes a village Mm. I love the like idea that. of a mentor if you're kind of a new sourcer. That's genius. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I'm told I have a couple of people now that call me probably on the monthly and say, hey, this is what's happening. Never mind. Yeah. Um, and if is I can't solve their problem, I'll call somebody else. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is that why you started Source Houston? Let's give it a plug. <laughs> I wasn't going to do that. Absolutely. When are you coming to do Source London? Come on. Yeah. Hell yeah. Let's do it. Um, yeah. I would, would be really uh, It's on my bucket list. London is on my bucket list. Mm. Um, and it replaced, it replaced Las Vegas. I feel like I'd have to follow you around, though, and just give you subtitles. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I can do that. Uh, hey, howdy, y'all. He means hello, everyone. He means good afternoon. Um. I, I reckon we could get about. a queue. Yeah, what were we talking about? Get a queue of people lined up to do translation for you. It'd just be too funny. Yeah, biz okay. a one-legged man in an ass kicking contest, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking about <laughs> so did Source yeah, Houston. Right. <laughs> right. Lost it. <laughs> did um, Source Houston start from the the mentoring side? Is that why you started it? Well, to be honest with you, I almost like teared up. I'm laughing so hard over here. Um, so Source Houston, I started it because um, I realized that in, on the national scope, um, yeah. I'm connected to, to, to some really great people um, who are willing to help. Um, and, you know, I had a, there was a company down here that went through some layoffs that I knew quite a few yeah. folks from. 
And they're like, hey, man, if you know of anybody, hit me up because I need, I need a job. And it's like, well, crap, I don't really know too many folks here in Houston. And it's, it's a large, it's the fourth largest city in the United States, right? It's four million in Houston proper, six, almost seven in the surrounding area. Um, that's ridiculous. There's no need for that. I, there, we know too many people in Houston already. I mean, there's Megan Columbus here, Natalie Dunphy, um, uh, Jason Vogel, Elena Rivas, my first uh, mentor. Uh, there's a lot of folks here who know their shit and yeah. there's no reason for us not to share. Um, and, le- and as well as network, because I mean, waste management uh-huh. is, is headquartered in downtown Houston. They have a phenomenal team. Um, but uh, you know, th- there's no reason not to do it. Right. Um, and we have the knowledge at least to share, to get folks moving. We have a lot of agencies in the Houston area because of oil and gas markets. Um, and then also the IT and healthcare markets. Um, so we need to, you know, it's kind of your job. To, that's my personal opinion. If you get to a certain level of success, success where you are very comfortable knowing it, that in your career and the way you do things, yeah. if you feel like you're in a good place, well, damn it, give back. Mm. That's it. And so that's the whole reason that we started Surf Season. So we try to keep tickets really cheap. Um, mm. I think the most expensive was like 75 bucks for a yeah. night of dinner sourcing and uh, dessert and booze. Um, that venue looks awesome, by the way. Yeah, I, I was at a brewery, right? Yes, I love it. Um, so I think that's the most expensive it'll ever get. It, it, Lord help me if I can help it. Yeah. If it gets, if we if we start doing like get sponsors to help though. Yeah. Yeah, and I tell the sponsors that up front. Um, you know, if you're going to sponsor, like, listen, it's this much money, and here's why, yeah. and this is why we do it. And if you can't get on board with that, then I'll just bankroll it myself. And that's, yeah. what I've, that's what I've been doing. So, because yeah. I'm a sick, sick, sick individual. I make zero money off this, Actually, and it's not the plan. Sick, sick, sick as in demented. I think you mean like sick as in cool. What was this <laughs> thing you were doing? I saw bricks on Snapchat. I saw bricks and exercise and something. What were you up to? That has nothing to do with bullying, of course. I'm just being nosy. I sell bricks. What are you talking about? Oh, no, yeah. So, I don't think that my English is that bad. <laughs> no, it's not. But you no, know, your English is fantastic. You know, you like English okay. 1.0. You all English 2.0 right here. Good right. English, bad English. So, um, so I'm a I'm a military veteran, and so um, yeah. there was uh, the May was the was Military uh, Appreciation Month, yeah. um, and it was also Mental Health Awareness Month. So I just put it on my Facebook that I was um, going to do 22 push-ups every hour on the hour, every Monday, because it's military Monday, um, yeah. just because I need to keep it on the top of my mind um, and I need to do more. So I'm looking at doing some partnerships um, to help uh, veterans, specifically veterans who are truly uh, diagnosed with PTSD and some things like that. A buddy of mine who I served with, he was... He got blown up a couple of times and now he can't hold a job because he'll have random seizures and they have no idea why from a TBI. Like the dude, dude's like, well, I would love to work. And he's like, deuced out. So like in an interview, in an interview, it happened to him. So, um, yeah, so there's things like that. Right. And I see there's a little bit of fraud and abuse in the government. It happens. And I see people who are walking around easily done, um, that, that have easily gotten a hundred percent disability and they're like yeah i'm gonna go ride a jet ski and got my six-figure job like look here you big old bag of dumb there's people who need that Mm -hmm. yeah so anyway so the bricks were um because a couple of my army buddies were like uh that's too easy you need to elevate yourself so i did incline push-ups off of bricks nice sucked yeah i'll never be doing even one push-up no well not with that attitude no, no, no. This, this, that's the only kind of push up, push beer to throw you. Yeah. <laughs> um, Eric, we should have you back for a show on veteran recruitment. That would be cool. Yeah. I'd love to do that. Really cool. Yeah, sure. I'm so totally is there, absolutely cool with that. Is there a way we can support? Did you start a charity page for your push ups or is there a. No, I didn't do that. Um, I just want people to be aware of it. Like, yeah, listen, yeah. I, I'll pro- I, I donated my own funds because I just felt like I had to. I don't yeah. want people to pay money. I just want people to, to do what they can in their everyday lives, you know, yeah. it's, and it's, it's up to them. And I mean, you know what, if you, if you don't care and you're patriotic, God bless you. You know what, go ahead. You do your thing. 
I hate yeah. it when people are like railroaded into being patriotic. And here in America, yeah. you know, like you have to put an American flag on your lawn or you're unpatriotic. I don't care. I don't care yeah. if you put a flag up. I don't care if you support the troops or not. I would prefer you did, but that's your decision. So I don't like it when people get rid of it. It's really it. hard to be patriotic at the moment with that thing in charge. But anyway, that's another <laughs> conversation for another day. Um, so bringing it back around to bullying. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we were way off, huh? Yeah, no, but that's cool because, you know, it's our show and we do what we want. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that Dean had PS, uh, PTSD either. It's interesting. Mm. Um, I said, David. Nicola, I, I let my freak stalking flag fly, fly proudly. Love it. Love it. Um, recruiting animals, should bullying gurus be forced to call people and engage them? Yes. Because, <laughs> oh, what yeah. if they just don't have that personality? Then I think they shouldn't because then they could mess it up. Right? Yeah. I mean, if you got to the point to where you're a bullying guru in a recruiting space, I mean, you've had to pick the phone a couple of times. But I think yeah. everybody should perfect your pitch, man. Like, I perfect your pitch in every aspect text, email, Whatever platform you're using, uh, like mm -hmm. Meetup, yeah. you can use Meetup, the free messaging can you, platform. Can you see that? I took a photo of a phone earlier. I just thought it was the best. <laughs> that's, a, that's pretty good. <laughs> that is awesome. I miss those. I feel like someone that could be a really good kind of hacker sourcer type mind that just yeah. is shy and uncomfortable talking to people. And then I think that's yeah. okay. And just for them, have them just find the person and but hunt then them down. More of a researcher. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of a weird question else. to me, like being forced, like being forced, like forced, no. the free market, like gun to your head forced or what? What are we doing here, animal? I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess. But yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> like there are some folks who are just like freaking Rain Man who can like pull data yeah. for days. And, yeah. Every you probably, and you're right. You probably wouldn't want to put them in front of people and nerds like, the job bcz i'm reading for animal nerds, <laughs> nerds like the job bcz they just had to sit in the office by themselves hey fair enough i yeah, mean and if they play play. Play. Because, so uh, oh because um so kay kellison who was on the other week would say that she doesn't want to do the candidate outreach she would rather yeah. do just sourcing mm. the research great so actually i did miss the word force sorry i do think they should make contact but that's because i guess i'm a bit more extroverted than that i couldn't sit all day just researching i couldn't do that yeah i couldn't either but that's not i'm not a sorcerer <laughs> i mean i said play your strengths right any good manager if they're gonna make somebody make phone calls i mean why would you do it me i i, I don't know that's just you're gonna represent the company well yeah uh, and you know I, I i figure i think of the same line shally stockwell was uh in one of his trainings was saying you know practice your pitch and don't pitch your first time to your A-level candidate. And to me, it's like, mm -hmm. if you're gonna have somebody who's uncomfortable on the phone, why put them in front of those, any amount of candidates, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah. if your job rotates and calls for it, because things change in organizations, they need you to start picking up the phone, it's just an evaluation. Is that organization right for you moving that, forward? That was what was really interesting at SourceCon. I think there's been such a change in demographic as well. So when I actually said, okay, so who makes contact? It was pretty well every single person in the room, whereas it didn't used to be like that. And I think that comes down to a cost. Yeah. They've had to cut their teams down. Um, John Rose, I know several bullying gurus who put and hand them, hand, oh, hand them over to people speakers. <laughs> a dim room and no distractions. Just feed them every once in a while. <laughs> Yeah, and so John. I like if, the people speakers. I think that's awesome. I've never heard that. Let's just call it candidate engagement is now people yeah. speakers. <laughs> I am so stealing that off you, and I'm going to hashtag it. <laughs> uh, just give them pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and John, resourceful John over there, he's right. I mean, if you're playing yeah. to your strengths and your organization can support that, yeah. headcount wise and all that jazz, great. Do it. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. If it works. Knock it out of the park, swing away. But. But again, you think about like your data scientists and your tech and your nurses and those are really hard to source. You really do actually need that, whether you can afford it or not. You need it. If you've got vacancies you can't, you're struggling to fill, mm -hmm. find the money. Oh, there's so much conversation going on there, Georgia. Yeah, <laughs> on the chat, yeah. I, I see like that. won't read any of it out for those who aren't actually watching live. Yeah, yeah, there's the, the, the chat piece is moving. So, I know, it's it's Johnson, once come. an hour, pass food and drink through a slot in the door. <laughs> 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 
Don't worry, I'm not ever going to be your employee. They're labor laws, man. Labor laws. <laughs> yeah. And I know you're going to only give me four pounds an hour, and that's under what you should be. <laughs> hey, Aaron, when when do you think a team needs to start adding a sourcing? Like, say they're kind of small, they have three, and then they have five recruiters, and then 10. At what point do you think they need to think about a sourcing function? I mean, here's here's what I love about people because I've been on now three startup sourcing teams like in different industries and all that stuff um, when people think they want sourcers they hire them and then half the time they don't know what to do with them because they haven't mapped out their process right it is yeah. you may not ever need a dedicated sourcer only if you have recruiters that do both uh, you may not ever need um, a dedicated sourcer if your business doesn't support it right but I mean it's just mm -hmm. up to the management team um, if you have a recruiter that's just dying, but uh, on the on the prepping the funnel side, and they're actually doing their job, but they have too much uh, client management, and that may be a, an opportunity for you to to look into a sourcer. Um, but it's really up to the organization because um, I've been on four different sourcing teams now. I try to stick around, um, and uh, the, the metrics have never been the same. Like they all, there's always the the how, how are we going to grade you kind of thing because I mean when you go and this is another piece of the conversation too when you talk about hiring a sourcer you're essentially going whomever you report to whether it's the business or HR you're going to them and saying listen I'm going to hire somebody on recruiting staff but they're not going to own any racks they're not going to be responsible for any hires and they're going to cost about this much yeah. money right and so play that back to yourself yeah. <laughs> he's, he, see he's, he, he, agrees. he agrees with you yeah. he agrees he agrees. Yeah, he's going to be a sorcerer when he grows up. I'm waiting for my food for the slot. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like tacos for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Dave says, I'm learning about split models compared to rec based sourcing models. That's interesting. What are your thoughts, preferences on different models? I mean, that's up to the organization, right? I mean, I would prefer to be in one rec based model myself like i i want somebody to add me to the rec i'm the contributor and i rock and roll with that thing until we fill it or until something else is a bigger fire that's just mm -hmm. me um i think um again it's up to the business but if there's too many hands in the kitchen it just i i don't know can you say what is a split based model i don't know what that means i'm assuming he means from multiple people working on the same rec to fill it. I, I could mm -hmm. be wrong, but I think that's what we're working with. Or maybe splits for agency style. David, can you elaborate? Yeah, yeah. please explain. Yeah. Which won't mean anything to you because you're not Australian. But anyway, um, <laughs> we had this awful Amer oh, Australian politician who used to always go, please explain. Ooh. Anyway, mm. that's another whole code. Oh, you're right. Split is more uh, funnel based. Okay. Than name. Oh, okay. So when you say split, you're talking, well, since it's funnel based, that means there's not oh, even a right Oh, okay. So most yeah, people are Okay. Yeah. That's super interesting. But super hard to measure success, but great, interesting. Well, I guess that's where um, I'm name dropping a tool now. Um, candidate ID is really cool for that sort of stuff. When you just wanting to keep that pipeline going, and it's the, the best tool I've seen for keeping people. Hmm. Just throwing that out there, seeing you guys are dropping high tool left, right, and center. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, back to what David's thing is split models, rec based sourcing. So if it's funnel based, judging metrics, I guess, would be how many folks you keep in the funnel. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think some, another smart person said funnels are, or uh, pipelines are great, but they leak. So I don't know if you're <laughs> working on pipeline there, but I think that so was another. That's where candidate ID is really cool, and you love it, Audra, because of the marketing side and the measurement behind it, mm -hmm. and it sort of helps. You know, people who might have just thing will keep being fed bits and pieces of information, which isn't just job based. It's all, you know, why you work for us, or white papers, mm -hmm. or all sorts of stuff. Right, because um, how do you define define keeping them in the funnel? Does that mean you talk to them once, or you talk to them every month? Like it's just hard to define. Yeah, you know, and, and for me, has the time to talk to everyone. On? So, don't don't forget the online bit, Aaron. You've gone off into the side chat channel and you've lost it. <laughs> so Sorry, no, I, I just I'll answer it now. So, <laughs> for and you have Audra's to question, that if you're going to answer that, yeah, absolutely. So, Audra, uh, to your point, is um, as long as there's some sort of forward movement, right? Yeah. Some sort of forward movement, um, because there's 
two sides of the candle that are burning, right? How bad they want a job or when they're willing to move. And then when you're opening for this role will be. And sometimes this end isn't ever lit, right? So um, it, it just, as long as there's forward progress and every I'm getting warm fuzzies and I feel that the, uh, the candidate is getting warm fuzzies, I'll call as often as needed. If it's, they want a weekly update, they want a monthly update. Um, but granted, this is, for putting this much effort into a candidate, this means they've been vetted and at least gone through a couple of interviews. Um, yeah. And it's the chances of being a hire are extremely likely. Yeah. So. so how do you find the time to do that then? Because the classic, you know, I got it again yesterday. Oh, well, I got 200 applications in for my role and I've immediately gone, well, clearly you're advertising it badly. <laughs> you <can't remember. laughs> you know? or there's, no, there's no screen out questions. Um, that was the, yeah, or like seriously, yeah, um, that was another whole conversation. But you know, I always get the time issue, time issue. So it's like, I, I don't, you I don't make the time because you see it's worth it, or well, if I know this person's a probable hire, then that that oh. means I need to keep them engaged regardless, mm -hmm. right? But again, I mean, those folks who who have two hundred candidates to go through, I don't disposition candidates in a requisition. I don't own it, mm -hmm. so depends on your model as well. They might need a sorcerer. Uh, I don't disposition. Yeah, in other words, what's disposition? Oh, you don't so, disposition. That's interesting. I do not. Because oh, I don't own the rec. I don't own it. Um, so, but I don't, I don't go through the rec and say this candidate disqualified this. I'm only filling oh, the rec. Reject. Reject. Yeah, okay. I'm reject. not. Yeah. Just so. needed a translation from American to English. Uh, so how, so, so how, what would you call it? Just reject a candidate. Ah, uh, got it. This position sounds much nicer than being rejected. Yeah. <laughs> it's just an like us American sugar cotton at all. Yeah. yeah. It's so lovely dating you, but I want to disposition you now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm you the next workflow step. So I see the recruiter, they get the ones that just come in the ATS. You're going off on your, yeah, that makes sense. Right. Now, I'll go through an ATS. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just. Do you find sourcing an ATS is, uh, works well? <laughs> so I'm gonna talk yeah. out of both sides of my mouth again. Yes and no. Yes, it works well because it's like you have to wrestle things like Taleo to the ground, right? Until yeah. you get it out, until you figure it out. But then you know you make Once folders you and all that stuff. I mean, it's and, it's awesome. It's this warm pile of people that you know want to work for you. But so many oh, it's, it's so hard. You get all these like double positives and yeah, a lot of yeah. Issues. I, I, I think that was a, a smaller ATS bright we've worked at for in the past. It, it had some of those issues, but yeah, I, it. You go to the fridge before you go to the store, right? Why, mm -hmm. why waste your money, right? Yeah. So I, um, I go, uh, I go to my ATS, uh, especially for tech roles. Um, mm -hmm. I'll go to four or five year old software development in, uh, intern roles, and I'll go back through and call and check those folks out, see what they're doing. Um, I love checking out. Uh, every once in a while, it happens. Um, I'll find a candidate that just withdrew from the process. Like it says candidate withdrew and then I'll say, Hmm, I wonder why. Hey, I heard you were looking at coming to Texas a few years back. What happened? Oh really? Well, Hey, let's talk about it again. How about a $5,000 like sign on bonus or whatever? What will it take? And just do that way. I, I love going to the ATS cause there's always little nuggets of, of awesome. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't call people nuggets of awesome. That's what I just did. Yeah, that's all right. I kind of like that. Audrey, you're so, a nugget of awesome. I like it. Nugget of awesome. So John I'm Rose. Change my LinkedIn header. <laughs> John Rose, you too. My God, you're like naughty children today. Um, I, John Rose, he uses Hello Talent, which I also adore, by the way, for my potential pipeline. Then move them into the company ATS CRM once ready to progress. Yeah, absolutely, completely agree with that. Love it because when they're not really an applicant, but you've just found yeah. them and found all their social profiles and done the work, I think it's awesome. I agree, and that's how I like to, to, to operate. Right now, I don't have a, a CRM, so I'm uh, I'm doing it old school. Outlook mm -hmm. calendars and mm -hmm. spreadsheets galore. Excel spreadsheet. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And I'm actually, I'm trying to find a couple of, so if any of you guys out there are really good with Zapier or Ift, I'm trying to find uh, something that will connect my Google Sheets plus um, a couple of other software. So if you're really good at Ift or preferably Zapier, help me out, I'm asking. Mm -hmm. Please. Um, I just some of that automation. I beg your pardon. How many push-ups do they help? Hundred. Uh, I mean, <laughs> in a day, yeah. Like I could probably no, do. No, in like in ten minutes. In, oh, in ten minutes, seventy. Ish. <laughs> or do not like? Yeah, we might do one. 
<laughs> oh, you could do more. You could do more. Mm -hmm. Not with that attitude. Okay. Um, yeah, but, no, that, that's why I'm not ex military. <laughs> Oh, you'd be a great switcher. I got you don't like being told what to do. Yeah, well, you're not right for us. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, you would be crap. <laughs> oh, Audra, no sugar cut whatsoever. Love you. <laughs> oh, should we, anything else about bullying we missed? Because we've got to wrap up soon. Oh, crap. Anything you want um, to cover? Yeah, we missed. Oh, my minutes. God. I want to read this message out and I can't. Why not? Why not? Call David David. <laughs> oh, do, do we call him Dave? Or was it me? Yeah, and I, I pronounced his name correctly, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> we're all, David, David Nicola says, we're all awesome nuggets. <laughs> Solid. Um, you know, if the, if the one thing anybody can take away from the show is don't forsake your Boolean. Yes, there's yeah. all kinds of tools out there that'll say, we'll do it for you. But why would you outsource your own thought process? Because that's what you're doing. Right. Yeah. Let, then, some, let somebody else do the groundwork and then you can fine tune it, but still have your own thought process because really the thought process is what's going to keep you alive. That and your ability to, to pick up the phone if it's part of your job, animal. And mm -hmm. also <laughs> if you, uh, you know, are able to, to just hustle and just figure stuff out. But don't yeah, forsake your bullying. Most of those are based on a job title. And you might actually search for a phrase rather than search for a job title. So you might pick up good people that way who are, are running ridiculous things like, you know. Yeah, and you know, the it's interesting. I want to watch Google for Jobs come out. You guys were talking about it, what, a couple months ago on the show? Um, they're clustering like titles for us. They're using that semantic mm -hmm. power of Google to start clustering mm -hmm. that. That's going to be amazing, um, depending on how they roll that to market. It says if it's super expensive, then it's no longer amazing. But um I'd be very interested on on just seeing if I could get into the back end of that and just seeing how that works because like to Audra's point with your bullying, don't look for job titles, look for nouns and verbs. What do you do and how are you doing it? Nouns and verbs. Yeah. So do you think Google for jobs is gonna be really take off and be some danger for some companies like Indeed? <laughs> I'm glad you said that because <laughs> I on the, in the Google I.O. Um, Sundar is on stage and he specifically mentioned career builder blah blah blah. Oh, I've been drinking. Uh, career builder, <laughs> monster, glass door, and like that's like you know, indeed is right here in the middle, and he went all the way around it. And so that's me is like, aha, uh -huh, interesting. interesting. Yeah. So it's interesting, yeah. But Maybe. I'm sure that I'm sure Barb and her team over there at Indeed have uh, some things planned as well they're, yeah. they're super smart folks and they're really nice so <laughs> no no it's a great company so sundar from google if you're hearing me man let's be friends i'll i'll say you're nice too once i meet you add him on linkedin i'm sure he looks bad yeah and, <laughs> there you go i mean and a hookup on a google mm -hmm. pixel would be amazing but you know, <laughs> whatever yeah thank you thank you I've completely forgotten who our guest is the next week, but I know that it's going to be more on the marketing side. Yeah, yeah. something. I know I haven't mentioned them in yet, so we had someone fall out. I know, like who, later. So but it's on the marketing side, so you're going to love it, Audra. Yeah, I'm excited. Right. That's my jam. So um, yeah, I'm done all right with the bullying, though. What was that? You've done all right with the bullying. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> you weren't just going. No, that was too confusing. <laughs> you were like right in there. <laughs> 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 I, I do a little little small self plug if I may, man. Yes, no, absolutely. So I have an about me page. I'll put it in the chat, but it's um, about me about dot me forward slash Aaron with two R's, not one underscore Z underscore Daniels. So if you ever want to talk shop, uh, you can schedule an appointment on my calendar, um, and I'm willing to help. So. Aaron, have you thought about buying your domain name and then forwarding it to that so you can just say AaronDaniels.com or whatever is free? I'm cheap. It's like fourteen dollars, twelve dollars a year. Is it? <laughs> yeah. But I'm using that. I I bought a domain for Source Houston. I'm only buying one domain. I'm just oh kidding. God! Wow. I'll I'll lend you the twelve dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, come on, man. Yeah. It's easier to do a website the, and put it. Yeah, we got one minute. Good. One minute. When's the next Source Houston? Yeah. The next Source Houston will be the week prior of November 11th. We're going to be focusing on uh, recruiting veteran talent for our main stage, and then also then we'll have normal breakouts. Did you just say the week before November 11. Correct. What does that mean? Because I don't have a solid date yet. We're working on that for better. Or the week of. 
So yeah. at some point between the sixth and the eighteenth. Correct. It'll probably be that right. Wednesday or Thursday. Right. But it, right. yeah, and if you want to check out Search Houston, it's just searchhouston.org. Dot work. Awesome. Thank you so much, awesome. Aaron. Cool. You're, Thank, thank you, you so much for having me. Thank you, God. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all have Bye, a great guys. day. We'll see you back on Friday next week. Yeah. Thanks, awesome. Aaron. Back to normal. Take hey, let's care. talk about Bye. veterans soon, yeah? Yes. Yes. Thanks, Definitely. Bye. Bye.